when you have to do what? <laughs> Dispatch. How, how, yeah, well, I, I'm talking all kind of languages. In other words, so how much longer are, are we tied with the county system? So you cancel it. Pardon? 30 days notice, written notice. Uh, just curious. Because again, I saw a guy up on the street, he was smoking a blunt near High Street, and he had a beer, and he was standing outside the car, and he's poorly dressed. And you know, you still got to go there to that 911. I mean, I understand what the county's doing, but you know, it seemed like there should be a way that it should be simplistic, but that's maybe my thinking, but it is what it is. I, I, I agree with you. Charlie. Because you know you got to go through a qu query of questions, you know, there's an emergency, and and it's, it's just a difficult time. Mm -hmm. But this is the opinion. Thanks. Commissioner yeah. Hicks. Yes, I know that uh, um, Lewis is out today, but I I, I do want to uh, follow up with a couple of things. Um, I wanted to uh, find out if we've made any progress with the. Uh, uh, in talking with the Cecil County officials to discuss the land behind the uh, uh, Board of Education for a possible uh, recreation center location. Uh, we have a move forward on, on that. that. No, I think he... Gene Minner's working. Yeah, it's okay. Gene. Yeah. Uh, long process. I'll ask her to follow up with you. I think Gene is our follow-up. Okay. Gene. Okay. And, and Chief, I, I'm still getting, um, I guess, interest from uh, individuals that own property in our high-risk areas for possible substations or satellite locations. So maybe we can just actually sit down and see if it's feasible at all um, to come up with some numbers or something. I'm not sure how to do that. Also wanted to kind of follow up with the uh, the Lancy Village Playground. Uh, let's see where we are in the stages of getting that. I do believe that forward, uh, going forward. I think that Mary has placed um, the, she got it in under the grant deadline. Okay. But I'm not sure I asked her to follow up with that. But uh, I think that, that was the I think that was the was the deadline. Okay. And um, <clears throat> I know we, we need to act quick uh, as far as the uh, Rudy Park issue and the uh, the, the children um, and the safe crossing. I want to know if we if we actually move forward on that. Got the letter out to the board. Um, I um, Lewis did type up a letter to the superintendent um, and he sent the letter to her. Uh, let them know what we discussed at the uh, meeting there and if they would help us out with that problem with getting the bus stop there. But we have not received an answer back yet. Okay. Um, the letter has gone to the board and obviously in most cases when you are putting out the bus in service and you got to go through the logistics and finding out the number of kids and the pickup and the people have to find the time. I think it's a good idea, but on the other hand, I, I just wonder how many kids will utilize that service because most kids at Rudy Park, even though a bus would probably be able to pick them up 20 minutes to school, there are some kids who are creatures of habit will still take the last minute and walk across the highway because now I get to school in two minutes, I don't have to catch the bus in 30, but it's still a good idea. Well, yeah, yeah, I just feel like, you know, I just feel it's a responsibility. Right, I understand. Yeah, right. it's kind of like not an option. And now that the school has started, um, we really need to act quick on uh, to get it resolved. Well, this too, I think we discussed that, we asked her that, uh, that would be on a temporary basis, right. uh, so we talked with the State Highway, if they can come up with the uh, funding to uh, actually construct some sidewalks and completely redo that intersection for us. Right. But to uh, start it now, you know, they, first of all, they need to get the funding and it would be, take some time, so we just asked to do this on a temporary basis. Right, immediate time solution. Being. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I guess last, um, I'd like to say that the, uh, the final car show, um, was, I mean, it went very well. Um, uh, it seemed to meet a lot of uh, out-of-towners, so to speak, that uh, brought their uh, families and, and other uh, members uh, in for the car show and, and really enjoyed walking downtown. I didn't get uh, uh, any complaints at all, uh, just a lot of good comments. The weather was nice as well. So 
Thank you for that. That was all nice, and keep that up. They did keep asking too if we can get an October call show. We, I talked to uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Waldridge today. They are looking for an October show <laughs> um, at, on the weekend. So it, um, we're looking into that. If we can have permission to close the road in the daytime on a weekend day, um, they're looking into it. So, and the food establishments just, I, I had three establishments come in the next day to thank us. One said it paid for their bills for the month. Um, the other one where it's packed and, and all three were just really happy that we did that. That's good. I think we had a very successful year. Yeah. Very nice. And all of you should have received an invitation to Elton's first home football game at which time they're going to dedicate the stadium. Your tax dollars have gone into the stadium in the amount of $55,000, which they have done very, very well. So, yeah, I believe asking a number of people, county commissioners, board of education members, uh, local officials. So did you all get those? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I did respond to that. I would be there. Uh, one thing I did forget, um, some of you might have seen in the Cecil Wig that one of our public works department um, does a fine job of welding, and he put a bicycle rack together uh, to get an opportunity tonight. It's sitting right out front of the town hall here. He brought it up here, it's out there. You can get an idea, see what kind of work he does do. And we certainly do appreciate what he does, does for the town. Okay. All right, Bobby, White. Uh, I'm Bobby White. And I'm here to uh, now I discuss this water and sewer bill uh, increase. I know this thing went through, uh, and I know it's past that point. But what I would like to ask of the, the commissioners and, and the town finance uh, people is to look at the possibility of billing monthly. Uh, all our system is based on monthly payments. Uh, retirees, uh, people on, on social uh, security, people that have their incomes come in, everything, most of the bills are based monthly bills. On the water bills, it's three months. With the increase, the way it is, and especially for the out-of-town residents, that's a big lump to swallow when you give the bills out, and especially when it comes in the month of December. It's, it's everyone that I've spoke to about this, and even before this increase, the possibility of billing monthly fit their budget and their criteria a lot better than billing quarterly. Um, the, uh, I think the positives more than outweigh the negative things. If, if you could do something like that, uh, I understand, I, I asked a question, uh, the town has 6,500 customers. Uh, a lot of the bills are over, a lot of the bills are delinquent. Uh, I mean, I think that if you spread something, break it up in monthly payments rather than quarterly payments, it's a lot easier on individuals to take care of that. It, uh, it's not handing someone a water bill uh, on the 1st of December when it comes in for three or four hundred dollars. It says you got 30 days to pay it or you're going to get your second notice and you only get a check one time a month. So if your check comes on the 1st or the 3rd, you don't get the water bill to the 5th. You, you, if you haven't budgeted your money good, and with the economy the way it is today, to some individuals that means a big difference. And then you come up on the, the end of the month, you haven't got your check yet. There's no way you can meet, meet the deadlines. And that would soften this blow, I think, to the the residents and people in, in the town, if they could see to budget it or bill monthly. Uh, I mean, it, it would bring more money into the town on a monthly basis, which I, I don't have the figures or the things on how much that is, but I know there would be some benefit to the town by bringing that in to offset maybe the billing monthly. Um, and uh, I, I don't have, uh, 
all the information on the out-of-town residents and whose water bills are double, but if you're paying $114 in town, you're paying $228 or something out of town, and it goes over this 9,000 gallons, then you're, it's, it's pretty hard lump to swallow to walk up and say, here, I got your water bill, but it's $350. And they say, well, I can't pay it. I mean, I'm a, I'm a landlord and I, I meet people in these situations, plus I've talked to other people that's just a resident or on fixed incomes or on that monthly thing and it's it's the same thing it's easier if it's paid monthly like your electric bill is uh, your everything's based monthly except car payment whatever except the water bills and stuff and it comes in in one big lump sum and with 40 percent and uh, you add that up and then go into three months and if you're over which majority of people are over if they've got a family living in a, in a place you use more than 9,000 gallons minimum it's, it can go up like I say I don't I, I didn't have that information I don't know if it's available to the public of the bills how they go but uh, I asked today about the meeting and they said it's tonight and I wanted to come right away uh, that's uh, that's about what I have to, to add on it I just uh, I think another thing that would probably you know help in the uh, uh, the detection if there is a problem uh, with anything of leaky water or this or that before it runs an economical I mean to four or five six hundred eight hundred dollar bill when it comes in then you got a dispute that it's easier to keep a handle on that monthly than it is even for the town. That doesn't help the town to go into the sewer plant. It doesn't help the town to, to use that water or let it leak down the drain. Uh, so the positive issues that could be sought out of this, uh, the town definitely, if they've seen a change in this water bill, they know something's wrong. I mean, and I think that's everyone's responsibility. If there's a, if there's a problem, you catch it now rather than three or four months later. And like I say, everything is monthly. It's not. It's not quarterly. It's a, it's a lot easier on the uh, individual. And, and it, I mean, I'd hate to pay three car payments at one time. You know, you pay one. Yeah, I hate to pay three months electric bills with the summer we had this year. You know, you pay one electric bill. So, I would just like to ask. You know, if that's feasible. I, like I say, I'm only going with what information I have. I don't have all the information. You might have something or. Mr. Rapo might have information that I'm not privy to. I, I don't know all the steps. I'm just coming to you with what I do know at this point, you know, and what I could say to you. But if, if you could look at it, uh, it would be a lot easier. And uh, I know it's always rough in the month of December, the, like we want to recognize this rate in December. And if you've got a big water bill, you, you just, there's, and if you look at the thing, it's it's other things too. You're on fixed income. A lot of people don't set fixed income. It makes a difference if you can do it monthly than try to come up with that lump sum in three months. Okay. All right. All right. So thanks for your time and thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mike. Evening, Mayor, Commissioners. I just have a couple of questions for you related to your policies of making information available to the public and what you're doing with things like that. Is it my understanding now that the policy of the Mayor and Commissioners is to stop recording the workshops? That That's a permanent decision from now on. Uh, it's probably not a productive decision from, from your standpoint. And it's certainly not a productive decision from the standpoint of trying to let the public participate in meetings. I've heard, heard you, particularly Commissioner Jablonski, and very rightfully so, take the lead about a year and a half ago and through a complicated process of urging, opening up the, the governmental processes here. And you did some important steps like, uh, well, the argument was, well, let's start streaming the videos so we can do them. You started tweeting and all these things. And it was all about creating